So I've connected the PC to the router using an Ethernet cable. So I need to now configure an IP address on my PC. So on my local area connection, you can see that we connected at one gigabits per second. I'm gonna to go to properties, TCP IP version four, and give myself an IP address of 192.168.1.2, default gateway 192.168.1.1. Click OK, click OK, click close. So from a CMD prompt, Let's see if we can ping the router. So ping 192.168.1.1. As you can see, the ping succeeds. So now I should be able to telnet to 192.168.1.1. As you can see, I'm prompted for a username. So we're gonna enter our username of admin, password of HP. And as you can see, we have successfully connected to our router. As an example, I can type system view display current config. So what Telnet allows me to do is it allows me to connect to a router across an IP infrastructure and configure the device as if I'm connected to the console of the device. As you can see here, we've got a password on the console. We've got a password on the auxiliary port. We've also got authentication mode scheme on the VTY lines. So that's how you configure Telnet on an H3C or HP router. Something similar would need to be done on an HP A-series switch. Now at the moment, I've got a Telnet connection to my router. For security reasons, you may prefer not to use Telnet, but rather use SSH. Telnet is in clear text and hacking tools can be used to capture usernames and passwords and other information. So to enable SSH, you have to go to system view, which is where I currently am. And then you type the command SSH server enable. That enables SSH. You have to generate public and private keys. Please refer to the VPN introductory video where I explain the concepts of public and private keys, symmetric encryption algorithms, and asymmetric encryption algorithms. So I can type the command public key local create and in this case I'm going to use RSA rather than DSA so RSA in this case public and private keys have already been created so I'm asked whether I want to replace them I'm going to say yes what's the modulus or bit size in this case I'm going to accept 1024 as you can see the router as you can see the router is generating keys and the keys have been created so now I need to create a username and password to allow a user to connect using SSH. So local user, in this case, I'll specify admin one. Obviously in the real world, you wanna use more descriptive usernames than that. The service type is gonna be SSH rather than Telnet. The password I'm gonna to set to an encrypted password of HP, type quit. And now let's configure the VTY lines. So user interface VTY 04 authentication mode is gonna be scheme, the same as before. But in this case, I'm gonna specify protocol inbound and notice I can specify SSH. So typing the command display this shows me that at the moment, the only protocol supported is SSH. We might wanna change that to allow both SSH and Telnet. So to do that, I would type protocol inbound and notice I can specify the option all to permit both Telnet and SSH. I could also specify a user privilege level. So when a user is authenticated, when they Telnet or SSH to the router, they'll be given a privilege level of three. In other words, full rights to the device. So opening up PuTTY, I can connect to the router, so 192.168.1.1, using SSH on port 22. So click open. When you connect to a device using SSH, you'll need to accept the public key of the device. So in this case, you can see the public key of the router. 
and you asked whether you want to accept it or not. So in this case, I'm going to say yes. I can now log in as admin1 with the relevant password of HP. And as you can see, I've been able to connect to the router using SSH. Notice please, if I try and use the command system, the command is not accepted. There are only limited commands allowed here. So I can use the option super to now escalate my privileges. I've now been given a privilege level of three. So system view is now accepted as a command. Now going back to my local user configuration. So in other words, the configuration of admin one. There are a few options here. And notice I have this option authorization attribute level and I can specify the level of the user. So in this case, I have to specify that the user has an authorization level of three. Even though we configured a privilege level of three on the line, the user requires that privilege level. So I'm gonna quit, open up another SSH session. So SSH to 192.168.1.1. As you can see, I'm prompted to log in. So I'm gonna log in as admin and the password is HP. Now, when I type system view, I immediately get privilege level three. So just to show you that, type display, or rather display current config. And notice there's a really nice option available on both Cisco and HP A-Series devices. I can use the command forward slash and then enter a value that I wanna search for. So rather than having to page through the full configuration, the output displayed is only from that keyword. So as you can see here, the authorization attribute for my user with the name admin1 is set to three. Notice admin had that authorization level already. However, admin can only telnet to the device, not use SSH. So let's prove that. So 192.168.1.1 and now I'm gonna try and log in as admin with a password of HP. Notice access is denied. But if I telnet to 192.168.1.1 and log in as admin, notice it succeeds. That's because admin is only enabled for telnet whereas admin one is enabled for SSH. So the devices are very secure and you can use a lot of security mechanisms on these devices.